Hello friends, welcome to a new episode of Strat India. Today while celebrating our 75th year's independence, we will remember some of the great sons of India in key moments in Indian history. India is set to celebrate its 76th Independence Day on August 15th. The day will mark the country's freedom from British rule in 1947. The country's first Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru unfurled the national flag from New Delhi's Red Fort on August 15, 1947. While Indian Independence Act got approval on July 18, 1947, the August 15 date for Independence Day was chosen by Lord Mountbatten. He chose this date as it coincided with the date of Japan surrendering to the Allied forces after World War II on August 15, 1945. The national anthem was composed by Rabindranath Tagore in 1911. On January 24, 1950, this song was renamed as Jan Gan Man and adopted as the national anthem by the Constituent Assembly of India. Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar drafted the Indian constitution and it was adopted on 26 January 1950 and it became a republic. Sardar Vallabhai Patel, also known as the Iron Man of India, was one of those leaders who are remembered for their selfless service to the nation. Born on October 31, 1875, he not only played a crucial role in India's freedom struggle but also a much more instrumental role after the independence, post-independence, he became the deputy prime minister and was given the charge of home, states and the information and broadcasting portfolios. At that time, he was also entrusted with the task of integration of princely states into India. He lived up to the expectations, uniting more than 550 princely states to build the Republic of India. He also handled the complicated issue of integration of Hyderabad and Jammu and Kashmir successfully. Apart from this, as the Home Minister, he successfully managed the law and order situation and brought back peace to a country ravaged by communal strife. In 1950, seven years after the Bengal famine, India's first Prime Minister constituted Planning Commission of India which was tasked with overall economic development of India. India's first five-year plan focused on huge public outlay for agriculture and the primary sector. The plan provided for three major public sector hydroelectric dams the Bahakar Nangal, the Hirakud and the Nagarjuna Sagar. He simultaneously created and metamorphosed public sector bureaucracies into engines of scientific advancement. This is best exemplified by the creation of the Department of Atomic Energy, the Baba Atomic Research Center, the Physical Research Laboratory, Indian Space Research Organization, National Chemical Laboratory, the National Physical Laboratory, the Fuel Research Station, the Central Glass and Ceramics Research Institute and the National Metallurgical Laboratory. The Sino-Indian War united the country in her darkest moments and gave birth to an India who at least temporarily developed the will and the resilience for introspection. The two wars fought by independent India, within a short span of 15 years of independence had revealed a fatal flaw in the Indian national psyche. This was the flaw of lack of strategic vision, perspective planning and maintaining the required consistency in evolving and nurturing of national strategy aims and objectives. The war forced Indian to think beyond the immediate and work for a collective future. Indian Army after 1962 became a more potent force one of the best defence forces in the world. The Green Revolution was a period that began in the 1960s during which agriculture in India was converted into a modern industrial system by the adoption of technology, such as the use of high-yielding variety seeds, mechanized farm tools, irrigation facilities, pesticide and fertilizer. Mainly led by agricultural scientist M. S. Swaminathan in India, this period was part of the larger Green Revolution endeavour initiated by Norman A. Borlaff and supported by our late Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Sastri with our eternal slogan of Jai Jawan, Jai Kishan. Operation Flood, launched on 13 January 1970, was the world's largest dairy development program and a landmark project of India's National Dairy Development Board. Dr. Vagesi Kurian, the chairman and founder of Amul, was named the chairman of NDDB by Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri. Kurian thrust the program towards success and has since been recognized as its architect. 
It transformed India from a milk deficient nation into the world's largest milk producer, surpassing the United States of America in 1998 with about 22.29% of global output in 2018. Within 30 years, it doubled the milk available per person in India and made dairy farming India's largest self-sustainable rural employment generator. The Pakistani Instrument of Surrender was a written agreement between India, Pakistan, and the Provisional Government of Bangladesh that enabled the capitulation of 93,000 West Pakistani troops of the Armed Forces Eastern Command on 16 December 1971, thereby ending the Bangladesh Liberation War in the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971 with the formal establishment of the People's Republic of Bangladesh in erstwhile East Pakistan. It was the largest surrender in terms of number of personnel since the end of World War II and brightest moment in the history of Indian Armed Forces. The event, known as Victory Day, is celebrated as a national holiday in Bangladesh. It is also celebrated by the Indian Armed Forces. Operation Smiling Buddha was the assigned code name of India's first successful nuclear bomb test on the 18th of May 1974. The bomb was detonated on the Army Base Pokhran Test Range, in Rajasthan, by the Indian Army under the supervision of several key Indian generals and scientists. Pokhran 1 was also the first confirmed nuclear weapons test by a nation outside the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. Officially, the Indian Ministry of External Affairs characterized this test as a peaceful nuclear explosion. India started its own nuclear program in 1944 when Homi Jahangir Baba founded the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. Physicist Raja Ramanna played an essential role in nuclear weapons technology research. He expanded and supervised scientific research on nuclear weapons and was the first directing officer of the small team of scientists that supervised and carried out the test. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam was a great Indian scientist who worked miraculously for India's missile technology and nuclear weapons programs and politician who played a leading role in the development of India. He served as a president of India from 2002 to 2007. After graduating from Madras Institute of Technology with a degree in aeronautical engineering, Kalam joined the Defence Research and Development Organisation in 1958. He joined the Indian Space Research Organization in 1969 as project director of the SLV-3, the country's first satellite launch vehicle. When he returned to the DRDO in 1982, he oversaw a program that resulted in a number of successful missiles, earning him the nickname of Missile Man. Dr. Kalam played a major part in developing many missiles under the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program including Agni, an intermediate-range ballistic missile and Prithvi and other tactical surface-to-surface -surface missiles. He also played a pivotal organizational, technical, and political role in India's Pokhran II nuclear tests in 1998. In 1991, when P.V. Narsimha Rao assumed the office of the PM, the country was facing challenges on various fronts but the biggest problem was the economic crisis threatening the macroeconomic stability of the country. India faced its worst economic crisis and was on the brink of a sovereign default. The 1990-91 Gulf War had led to a sharp increase in oil prices and a fall in remittances from the Indian workers working overseas. This led to a sharp depletion in India's forex reserves, at less than $6 billion, and this was just enough to meet around two weeks of the country's imports. The deteriorating fiscal deficit situation and burgeoning foreign debt levels did not help the government either. A fiscal deficit of 8% of gross domestic product and a current account deficit of 2.5% of GDP all added to the government's woes. The central bank pledged India's gold holdings with the Bank of England in four tranches from the 4th to the 18th of July 1991, raising around $400 million through this route. Prior to this, in the midst of national elections, the State Bank of India sold 20 tons of gold on the 16th of May to the Union Bank of Switzerland to raise around $200 million. His government immediately launched several economic reforms and, in its very first budget presented by then Finance Minister Manmohan Singh on July 24, 1991, it laid the roadmap of the country's economic reforms. 
the 1991 budget is hailed by many as one that laid the foundations of a modern India and the roadmap for pushing economic reforms in the country. The government also unveiled a game-changing new industrial policy removing many roadblocks that hindered industries from flourishing. Exactly 30 years have passed since this historic event that helped India avert a major economic crisis and placed it on the high growth trajectory. The highway developing project was modeled on the lines of the national highway system of the US. Vajpayee believed that constructing arterial roads would trigger development. When Atal Bihari Vajpayee launched the Golden Quadrilateral Highway project in 2001, critics laughed at it saying where are the funds and how will the government acquire the large swathes of land required for the massive scheme. However, the former PM proved the critics wrong as India's most popular highway projects with four-sixths lanes connecting major metros of the country came up within a few years. Over a few years, more than 5,400 kilometers of new highways were built across the country. The Golden Quadrilateral and the North-South and East-West Corridor projects to build highways between four top metropolitan cities of Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai and Kolkata as well as from Srinagar to Kanyakumari and Porbandar to Silchar received appreciation from his opponents too. The Rural Roads project called the Prime Minister Grameen Sadek Yojana was another of Vajpayee's contribution to infrastructure development in the country. The PMGSY, which launched in 2000, was aimed at providing good all-weather road connectivity to unconnected villages. As thousands of villagers got road connectivity, the former PM said roads will lead to the economic development of the hinterland of the country. During his tenure as Prime Minister atomic tests conducted at Pokhran for the second time. Not only was he unperturbed by threats held out by big powers, he went ahead and completed his task, declaring to the world that India has become an atomic power. On 5 August 2019, the Parliament of India voted in favour of a resolution tabled by Home Minister Amit Shah to revoke the temporary special status, or autonomy, granted under Article 370 of the Indian Constitution to Jammu and Kashmir, a region administered by India as a state which consists of the larger part of Kashmir which has been the subject of dispute among India. The Make in India initiative is a significant trend driving supply-side growth in the defence manufacturing industry. The government has announced several reforms based on import substitution and make in India for incentivizing capacity ramp up, promoting MSMEs, banning imports, giving preference to Indian vendors and so on. Private defense manufacturing companies, in particular defense equipment manufacturing companies in India, have benefited from this initiative as it created greater demand opportunities. These reforms are helping to meet the Atmanirbhar Bharat objectives. In January 2021, India launched the Vaccine Matri Initiative, a major diplomatic effort to gift and supply made in India vaccines to low-income and developing countries globally. As the world's third largest producer of pharmaceuticals, India is a serious contender in the race to produce COVID-19 vaccines. India's pharmaceuticals powerhouse provides generic medicines globally and produces nearly 60% of the world's vaccines, including vaccines for diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, tuberculosis, and measles. With 1.2 billion people and the world's third largest economy in purchasing power parity terms, India's recent growth has been a significant achievement. Since independence in 1947, a landmark agricultural revolution has transformed the nation from chronic dependence on grain imports into an agricultural powerhouse that is now a net exporter of food. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, while addressing the nation from the ramparts of Red Fort on August 15, 2019, set a target of turning India into a $5 trillion economy by FY25. Nominal gross domestic product stood at $2.83 trillion in FY20, so the country needed to grow by nearly 100% in the dollar term in the next five years. Doubling the size of the Indian economy has happened in the past in less than five years as well. In fact, this happened in four years between FY04 and FY08 when India emerged as a $1 trillion economy for the first time. So, another doubling of the size in five years initially did not seem to be impossible. 
Given the strong global headwinds and other challenges, we need massive investments of around $300 billion a year in key infrastructure sectors, such as roads, railways, airports, waterways, ports, gas and transport. It will not just spur economic growth but create enormous scope for employment, thus providing income to people and bolstering consumption on a sustained basis. And last but not the least. सोस नहीं जो तेरे लिए सा दर्द से महफूज रहे तेरी आन सदा चाहे जान मेरी ये रहे न रहे